Hold on, I have lag. I was about to say, is everyone ready? Start. Hold on, I'm lagging. Yeah, no, it <laughs> happened right as I took a pause. A great so, start session. Yeah, oh, well, they always are. So, Amazing. you remember, you all remember where we left off? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Shopping. You guys were shopping. Gwen and Aaron were still in the upper portion of the shop. Oh, right. Everybody yeah, I was else out was downstairs. With my friends, wasn't I? Because <laughs> you know that's how it ended up when we're in the training fields. Yes. We're not going to open on you guys just yet, but. From where we left off, you guys are training, currently sparring a little bit. Uh, Aaron and Gwen are still upstairs, vibing. What? Am I having a fucking stroke again? What's going on? No, you're good. I, I Aaron feel... sounded like they briefly said something, but cut out. Okay. Also, there's an echo on Jules. What do you mean there's an echo on me? I'm a very loud person. Occasionally, I can hear myself. My love, you are breaking up. Like, glitch now hard. I Well, I don't know what to tell you on that, Curry, because my fucking, my, my fucking sound is even uh, above 40% of what the computer can do. It's and more, I've got my I've got my headphones on too. Are you sure you're not just hearing yourself what? normally? Depends. Anyways, so as you all are, we're actually not going to start with you guys just yet. We're gonna you guys are gonna be able to get you know your little ball rolling, but currently we are going to take a look elsewhere. As currently there is a dark and kind of gloomy area, one that's devoid of all light, but not like it's supposed to be. Like it's like someone stole the light out of a room. And in there, in this empty, voidless room, Gloom begin to crawl up from the cracks in the walls, the cracks in the floors. Anything they can get their climb through, they are coming through as they are mimicking voices, echoing, cackling as if talking to each other. And in the distance, there's a single voice single male voice one that sounds rather tired but rather energetic at the same time no it th this voice almost sounds like it's glitching well, I did, 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 didn't know I had made myself so available for you parasites. As the voice begins to cackle in the abyss, this empty room. The gloom responds. The queen. The queen demands audience. A queen, queen, queen of parasites is nothing more than a bigger bug to step, step, step on. We 
We offer you what you demand. We offer you freedom. Free. 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 Freedom. You <laughs> say to me, I require no freedom from parasites that help, help, help me into this prison in the first place. And as the gloom opens its slime-ridden mouth to respond, we cut! And we go back to the training ground, where the match has just concluded. Who is uh, sparring again? Oh, obviously Juliet. But no one's sparring. Juliet and who? Okay. I remember Kay, Juliet, both of you give me a dead D20. Oh, no, that's not what happened. I remember what happened. Oh, I wasn't oh. sparring. Because it, was, uh, it was just, uh, I left Juliet and Jetson there, and I went back oh. down. Remember? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you said no to the third wheel. So, Jules, Jet, what are you two doing in the basement? Well, shit, I don't know, Jet. What are we doing? Hey, now. <laughs> I said what, not who. They <laughs> literally just started flirting. <laughs> I don't know, but what would they be? Yeah, there's... What? what? Is there anything what? even to do in the basement, Curry? What can we do down there? Just sit and cuddle? Spar! Right. Look around! You yeah. practice! So you mean the training grounds? Ritual yeah, sacrifice. Yes. You said the basement! What? You asked sort what we were doing... the same thing. No Sure. Don't. I, I mean, it technically is downstairs from the already basement E shop. Yeah, but if this, uh, but if San Francisco is based off of the actual fucking, I can't remember the name of the actual city. San Francisco? San Francisco. If it's based off of actual San Francisco, there's a lot of big hills. It would not be that hard to enter into the basement, go downstairs, and walk out the first floor. A ground floor, I mean. Floor. That would be so trippy. Okay. Okay. Regardless, so we'll just... either way, we're on... <laughs> yeah, we're on the training grounds. Do we want it to be where we were sparring, Jet? You know, you the kind spar? of flirty spar? <laughs> because you know I it, it like... would have ended up like that if they were on, far. Hold on, hold on, let Jet respond. It, it would have. I also feel like Jet would not have been paying that much attention to their, like, footwork and everything. Oh, so there have okay. been plenty of times that Juliet has pinned, pinned them, huh? Well, guys... Both yeah. of you just give me a dead D20 real quick. Uh, which one is... There it is. D20. Wow, okay. One. What? Yeah, as many times as Jet got pinned, got fucking, you know, flustered and everything else, somehow, <laughs> through means unbeknownst to anyone, Jet has successfully won the sparring match. Are we sure nobody <laughs> knows the means? Are we sure? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> they, never, they would never know. They're, well, they're never they're, gonna know. Well, yeah, because we're not gonna fucking tell them. <laughs> How would they know? I just wanted to do that quick little know. funny. Oops. I just want to have that quick little funny. Uh, Gwen. Yeah, what up? What's Gwen doing right now? 
Gwen's with, with Aaron. Aaron. They, she was holding books for Aaron, if I remember correctly. Yeah. You and Aaron just kind of hanging out? Yeah? There's nothing else for them really to be doing right now, as far as I'm aware, so yep. Yep. Go ahead and give me a nature check real quick. Oh, right. Wait, what wasn't... No. Bring Wasn't one of the dream eaters also there? Now, Gwen, I'll ask you this, like how Aaron asked. Do you want this to succeed? I don't know what it's for, so I don't care. Okay. So, at first, you kind of just don't you hear like this weird little eh, something off in the distance, and you get a little chill down your spine, but it's nothing too bad. It's nothing like maybe just somebody opened the door, and like as if you on cue when you have that thought, Cade starts making his way upstairs. So it's like, oh, maybe someone did. If I recall correctly, yeah, we, yes. I got the information. Well, don't don't say yeah, just so quickly. If I recall correctly, um, didn't Aaron learn that their mother stopped by here? Yes. Uh, That's Aaron's having loading screen. I thought their mother stopped by at the um, bookstore, bookbinder yeah. place. Didn't have time. Yeah, didn't have time to process it because was dealing with getting the thing fixed. So. You guys are currently at you know Gary's shop. But it's not, it, it's far, but not like so far you need a vehicle to get to the bookshop. So it is still a bit of a fresh thing. As you guys are kind of just looking around, and Gary is just kind of sitting there, still happy go lucky Gary with his little mask on. What are you guys going to do? Aaron's going to turn to Cade as he's walking up and go, Do you want to go sell things again? Yeah, that sounds like fun. Excellent. We're going. The other two alerts at their own disposal. Just outright <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then just walking off towards the proper like shopping lanes and most traffic okay or actually not most traffic but kate and aaron would know the type of people who would go for their their type of selling and their wares uh i roll to see if if i could find out where the best place is uh yes Give me a, oh uh, god, what would this even be? Uh, give me, I don't want to say survival, what the fuck would this be? Because it's not like a, so, it's a very, you're looking for, uh... Insider perception, maybe? Yeah, there you go, insight would be, insider perception, yes. Whichever one you trust Didn't more. Can you just look at my insight? Yep. I blocked it out for a minute. Okay. Uh, like the fucking Terminator turning to John Connor. <laughs> there it is. Uh... So yeah, no, you instantly find it. Yeah. Help. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Shut up, Jet. Um. So, are you guys bringing Gwen along with you? Yeah. Or are you guys going by yourselves? Gwen wants to come. Gwen, do you want to tag along with them? Gwen will go if she's asked to go with them. Just welcome to. Okay. 
So you're not, you're not going far. You're just going to the more populated area. You could easily, like, the group from the training grounds could literally just fucking speed walk over you, and it'd be, they'd be there and, like, like, you're glitching out again. Am I good now? Yeah, so far. So you got mm. Aaron, are you talking right now? But uh, I'm trying to. Okay, there you go. There you are. I hear you now. God, who did we lose? Cade. Cade. God damn it. Uh, listen, I'm just going great I'm... today. <laughs> it's fine. And we'll make Scuff it King. It's okay. King we'll of Scuff. It... You chill on the Scuff at the moment. We're gonna... Your Scuff can wait. Truly oh. long may I unwillingly reign. Meanwhile, I'm over here just taking Nia out at the fucking knees. Cause I was trying to I was trying to find a gif of one of those flirtatious fights that happen uh, that that you see sometimes and I found one that was pretty much on point where it was a smaller person pinning a lar a much larger and taller person up against the wall going this means I won right and the taller person going yep sure thing And if that's not the ending of Juliet and Jetsum's fight... Kate is completely- well, no, he's always invisible, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's always offline, basically. Well, if he does I will say, uh... There, there you are, bud. So, ooh, you want to know what should happen? Sure. Mm. Uh, real quick. The place where the internet is plugged in, the outlet is incredibly loose. So, if just existing near it makes it fall out of the um, outlet. Oh no! Yikes! Got to go put that back in. Hold on, let me just. Okay. So, you guys, like, the group, the flirting to duo could fucking speed walk within, like, half a minute and get to you. It's not far from where you guys are going. So you three kind of migrate your way to the selling area, yeah? Yes. Okay. As you are doing so, uh, Gwen? Mm-hmm. Give me, you kind of get the feeling like after you start walking with the group, because you are joining them, you're just kind of enjoying yourself, you do get the feeling that somebody's sort of looking at you. Go ahead and give me a perception check, please. <laughs> yeah, that works. You... You instantly turn... I'm going to put this candle down. Uh, you instantly kind of, like, recognize that whatever's looking at you is not a threat. It's not a danger or anything. It's somebody scared or something scared. And you kind of start looking around, and you notice in one of the alleyways there is a dream eater that you saw before. A, a little... Uh, what are they called? The little musical note cats. My brain's blanking. Help. I got no- like, they're the cats with the musical notes on their tails, right? Yes. That's an obscure pull I wouldn't be able to.
an it looks like it's called a nicho chat a nicho cat or a fruits cat whatever yeah one of those one of those little like kitty cats and it's looking at you and it's kind of like just staring at you like are you the friend from earlier kind of vibe Gwen will go over and see what the uh, cat wants. It, as you get close to it, it just starts like backing away. But like, the more you get closer and like the gentler you are with it, it does sort of get closer and like trust you more. And then it starts kind of hopping on top of things to look you in the face. Go ahead and give me an animal handling check, please. Advantage. Okay. So its words start to become clear to you pretty quickly. As you do get the... You do get the uh, verse of... What the... Do you remember what the uh, Heartless, or not the Heartless, the Dream Leaders called the Glooms? No, I don't know if that ever came up. Okay, uh, well it starts, shit, actually I think it was something that was missed. Um, so it starts kind of trying to tell you about something, an infection of something, like the bad infection, the bad infection, the evil infection. As, like, it's trying to, like, kind of paw you without clawing at you. It, it looks like it's tired from that animal handling. It looks like it's very tired, but it did not go far. But it's kind of concerned and worried. Oh my god damn it. Roll 20, why'd you do this? What did roll 20 do? You know the corner where I put all my stuff? No. So I put all my all the little tokens and whatnot into one corner. That okay. one corner is where you pull out the different map stuff now. It It, it literally said, no, you have to move them now. Uh, but it does kind of it's trying its best to get like the words across that there's danger it's not bad danger but there's danger like it's trying to ask for help but it's hesitant to do so as if it's unsure of if the danger is there or not uh, Gwen will ask if it wants her to come look. As soon as you do, it starts kind of like the little tail starts going the little thring, thring, thring. Like, yes. Yes, please. Gwen will text Aaron that she's investigating something for a dream eater and follow. Okay, so you go ahead and you start. Oh, God. I might get murked for something. Hold on. Uh, so you go ahead and you follow it, and as it goes down this sort of alleyway, you realize that you can. You don't even need to make a check. The magic and the arcana around you is so thick, you can physically feel it. As it's sort of, like, doing its best to hide something but with this guide with this individual you are able to quickly kind of follow along and go oh here's where i need to go and you watch this little this little cat kind of god damn it i'm looking through my history of images and i just found a back rooms thing i promise i'm not describing the back rooms but it 
you see this little uh, Neko cat kind of walk through a wall. Do you follow? Yeah. So you walk through the wall. And as you do, you kind of realize that it's it's less a wall, more a door, and a door to what you kind of catch on afterwards as you are instantly in what is clearly a newly added or newly discovered safe haven for the Dream Eaters. It's almost like a coliseum design, but it's clearly been made for more of a dream eater safe haven. Would you like to be put on the map or do you just want to look around for a bit? I don't understand the question. There is a map of the uh, this design of the area where you were taken. Do you want to explore the map or do you just want to have it described to you by looking around? I would like to see the map, yes. Okay. So let me go ahead and just... Kurika. Look, sometimes you gotta reuse shit. <laughs> I thought I had the better one in here, but all I have is a bunch of cycle warfare stuff. So I had to ch pick something that wasn't cycle. Kurika. Gwinnin. <laughs> uh, as you... <laughs> God damn it. Like, can you sound less like a disappointed mom, please? Absolutely not. <laughs> About to get worse. Um, but go ahead and place your token. You would be arriving right around this area here at the bottom, where I'm okay. where I'm pinging. I had to find where you were pinging. Yeah, that's why I was pinging over and over again. Very very small individual. Um. You kind of look around. The 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 Neko cat is now kind of like climbed up on top of your shoulders and is like you can hear the soft, almost musical purring behind your head. As you are safe, so it purrs. When has a baby. Of, yeah, you kind of like look around and you do notice that though it doesn't show on the map, there is battle damage on there. On the in the center of this ring, almost that um, clearly shows that something fought here. And the dream eater begins to speak again. Recent light, very dark before. Safe, but not as safe as thought. You safe, please. And it's like, it, it takes a minute for you to kind of decipher it, but it's asking, it's telling you that light was recently brought to this area, so it's not as dark anymore. And they're concerned, they want to hide here, but they're concerned whatever fought here is still here, so they want you to just check it out. They want Gwen to go down there and poke it out. I can't help but notice I don't see any way to actually get down to the floor. Uh... In that case, what we're gonna say is that it's not a pit, it's a rise, it's a hill, so just, you can climb up these mounds. <laughs> Imagination. <laughs> so, as you get closer, do uh, make a investigation check. abysmal it's it's bad but it's not as bad as it could have been the dc was 
10, so you do pass. Uh, so you kind of just look around a bit, and then you notice, like, these... Yeah, these are gloom claws. You've, you've felt them before, and you've seen their damage done before, but these are gloom claws. But the, it, it's... Something's off about them. They don't look like the claw marks are offensively made. It's almost like the gloom was dragged away. As you kind of get closer, you see another piece of weird thing. You don't need a super investigation check, but it is a piece of metal kind of just sitting there, almost like the hip joint of a prosthetic leg, but it's fully animatronic. Like, Freddy lost a leg kind of animatronic without the fuzz. Quinn just sort of, like, lightly poking at it with their foot, like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, so as you poke it, go ahead and give me a deck save. Advantage. You are hesitant. Instantly pull your foot back and like take a step back as it kind of sparks and twitches as if it's still, you know, active. Give me a advantage insight check or perception, whichever one you trust more. This this place looks familiar, but not like a bad familiar, like a good familiar. You notice that some of these like defensive defenses that have been added were layered on top of what was originally here. That's something you noticed off the bat, but you didn't put it together until it started looking familiar. As you kind of you kind of do like that movie thing where you're turning in a circle, absorbing everything all at once. You don't sense any more danger, by any means. But this place just has that familiar look that's kind of like... It's it's in your head, you're not sure how it's familiar, but you know it's familiar. Have you been here before? And then you can almost... With the purring of the Neko Cat on your shoulders, you can almost hear... a tune. Like, the world is creating music kind of thing. Like, a tune that is ringing out in familiarity. Give me a history check, and then if it is above a 12, give me a performance. Yeah, that's above a 12. Okay, so... As you kind of, like your memory kind of clicks, you recognize that tune, and you, with your performance, you start humming along with it, and you notice the seats. They start to illuminate. This, this isn't a coliseum. This isn't just a mound of, you know, danger. This was, this was a stage at one point. A stage you had been to. A stage you're mom took you to a stage you had gone to long ago when you were real young as this is where you first saw her perform where you first got the inkling of music from others in your life what happened to it why has it become this and as you kind of take in that information, you hear something that warns you, but unsettles you at the same time. You hear a song that only your family would know. 
coming from about what might be in here. As this is like the stage box. The quote unquote front row seats. Gwen takes like a step here, sort of leans over and goes, Whoever's in there, come out. I'm not in the mood for games. And you just hear the fray, like you just hear this weird noise. It it sounds like it sounds like sparks. Oh, I didn't know you had pet, 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 pet games with you. And you see a figure kind of limping from the window right here. Like, you can see into there from the window right here, as this figure is limping from one side to the other. Now, I don't know, no, 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 how you got in here, but... I do hope you're not with the p p parasites. Pause. Gwen thinks, are you talking about the gloom? You know, the black, icky stuff? Do you say this out loud? Yeah. You, you yeah. Immediately yeah. you watch this figure raise a fist and crash the side of the wall, like demolishing it. They are not glooms! They, they, they are a parasite! An infection! An imperfection! And like, the more this person gets angry, the more they start to spark. They desecrate the gloom name! Insulted! Me, 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 mockery! Of it. Gwen looks at the cat like, you seeing this shit? The cat is staring at this figure like, if I was not, if I was able to piss, I would have pissed on your shoulders right now in fear. What the fuck is this crackhead? <sighs> like, this is not, this is not a good, the, the, the cat is not, like, too scared, but it's like, oh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable around that person. <laughs> yeah. Would you be able to calmly explain what you mean? Like, hand on the cat now, just like, they're there. Don't the worry, I've is, got you. The cat is, like, <laughs> curling its head into your hand, purring, and the musical purring is still, like, going on behind you. Let, 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 let me ask you. And then it kind of pauses... And the only thing you notice about this person is it's not a person. Because of the wall damage, a little bit of light is kind of crinkling in almost. To where you can see the body is illuminated somewhat in like these striped format. It is an automaton. But occasionally, whenever the sparks occur, you see the holographic image of clothing on something. Let, 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 let me ask you this. Make, make, made a song, and someone used it, changed a word, and claimed it was th th theirs. Would you be calm about it, 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 it? As you realize that that stuttering, that that sparking is the damage done to this automaton. God damn it, I just looked in Nia VC. Nia, stop calling somebody Freddy Fazbear. <laughs> yeah, Nia's being unhinged. I'm slightly ignoring it. Echo. Okay, let me, let me open something and I'll fix it. 
There we go. Gwen pauses, tilts her head, and just sort of goes, Well, I suppose if someone had taken something I made and claimed it as their own by just changing something small, I would be fairly upset, yes, but I would... You know... I... You're freaking out the dreamy versus all. Is this your leg out here, by the way? It... 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 it was. I... 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 I have... repaired it. I don't need, need, need it any longer. The dream, dream eaters can have this form of a prison. I, I, I will go elsewhere. Prison? Of, 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 of course. It, 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 prison. For a piece of me. When did this place become a prison? You, you, you know what this place is? It was an amphitheater, a stage. People performed here, music. As you begin to explain your recognition of it and what it is, the amphitheater it steps closer to the- this figure steps closer to the edge, puts their robotic claws, as that's all that's left of it, from the exoskeleton against the window seal, their body still sparking occasionally, never being able to catch the face, as this an like, the animatronic eyes stare at you. You- you-, you. Who- who are- you. <laughs> My name's Gwen. Who are you? Gwen. And like, as if somebody just slapped... This is gonna sound... This is intended to be funny, but at the same time, just so that the mood's not super dark. As if somebody just took a six-inch cold cut and slapped this person in the face... They get a wave of calm. Gwen and Gawain. You're alive. Yes. You know who I am. The figure begins to smile and kind of laughs at something. <laughs> yes, you, you, you can say I know you. You, you, you look just like. As the figure, although was like kind of leaning towards one as if to give some sort of stability, is now standing upright and just staring at you in silence before backing away. Uh, 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 Alcatraz. Write this down. Write this next part down. Look at me, note takers. Right. Seven. Alpha, six, gamma, Gwen. That is the password you'll need. I will see you there. And the figure continues to sort of back up. Do 
you say anything. One looks confused, but does repeat, you never answered my question. Who are you? They stop, and they walk back forward. Oh, 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 your answers can be earned, given, however you want, at Alcatraz. Find my, find my lab, and then we can have, have a talk there. And, and Gwenin. Very confused look being given to the robot. <laughs> uh, sorry, I think I cut out. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it, uh, Gwenin, and then there was silence. Uh, and, and Gwenin. It's good to finally meet you. And then they back away as you see a portal of darkness. Like, you can feel a portal of darkness opening. And then they back through it. Once they're gone, Gwen, like, not to the cat specifically, but very sarcastically goes, yes, because talking is so hard. No straight answers, only mysteries. As if on cue, the cat responds with the clearest indication of, okay, so that was weird for you too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. On the burnt side, this place should be safe for you guys to stay in, yes. And you can come find me if you need anything, alright? Oh, oh. Fucking, I almost did the voice. Uh... The dream leader goes, gives you like a nod and nuzzles into you a bit more, and then kind of like pops off your shoulders and you hear a song kind of start before stopping and it turns to you and goes please can you help me please to call them sure what do you need me to do music they love music it is how i'm supposed to call them One second. Okay. I have no idea what the fuck is going on outside, but I've been able to hear a car alarm for the past ten minutes. Anyway, I'm fine now. <laughs> Are you, are you sure? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't uh, coming through my headphones. Okay, uh, it wasn't. But um, yeah, it starts to like give a little jingle, but it's very quiet. Like it's a, like it's a supporting tune, as if to give you like a like like the tempo of a song. So, all you would have to do is uh, play along if you want to. Like, play a similar or equal tune. When will play along? <laughs> you begin, so do you, do you like sing? Do you pull out the guitar and strum? What do you, what do, you do to play along? Guitar. Okay. 
So you pull out your guitar and you start strumming along. Do you follow the exact tune or do you let your body decide, like like muscle memory decide what you want to play instead? As you can, you're already giving the exact tune needed, but like the, uh, what is the word? The follow through, like the other strums can be different. We're playing with the vibes, yes. You want to play with the vibe? Okay. The vibes. So you begin playing with the vibes, and eventually you make your way dead center of the ring as you begin to continue to play this song with the Dream Eater. I just ruined my fucking own scene because I had a fucking... A, I, I had like a brain thing that I realized something bad. Gwen, Gwen, Gwen having her character arc moment being an Animal Crossing game. Cade's, Cade's character arc is the fucking Doom franchise. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't mean for it to be a cliche. I'm sorry. But uh, no, you do continue to strum the, your guitar and you don't even like you're not sure when because eventually you do kind of get in the tone of enjoying yourself with this dream eater and like more begin to join in and they start kind of harmonizing with you. You don't even recognize that your guitar is completely changed shape. And go ahead and give me an insight check with disadvantage. Or perception, whichever one you want to do. But it has to be disadvantage? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll again, just to just for fun. Do you want still with this advantage? Just a dead roll this time. Yeah, the natural one took away all the fun I could have had with this. Okay. Uh. So you, it's it's still not an immediate notice, but by the time you go to check and like look down to change where your hand position is, you realize this isn't the same guitar. How do you react? Confusion, probably. Okay. So as you're kind of like absorbed in that confusion, your strumming eventually kind of pauses, and the moment it stops, the guitar changes, like as if switching between something changes to the normal guitar. The fuck? Stop that. <laughs> Nia, put Demix back in the box. <laughs> dance, uh, water, dance. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's closer to dance, Dream Leader, dance. Confused Gwen noises. Uh, but as you kind of, like, get confused a bit, you do feel a bit of, like, a bit more of, like, that kind of, that feeling you had before, back at, like, when you were playing for the others, and that emotion, those emotions you felt prior, do you remember them? I don't remember what you said about them. It was, uh, I believe I phrased it as acceptance, and, like, this one wasn't so much acceptance. You're not sure what this emotion was, but it wasn't a bad one because you didn't, like, as confusing as that weird Freddy Fazbear fucker was to you, seeing all, like, these dream leaders find a place that's safe for them because of your help just gave you, like, this little good 
feeling in the pit of your stomach. It's like, oh, I did good. I did good. Little bit of positivity. Little bit of positivity. You get it. Well, the more you begin to watch them and before you notice the guitar change, it was a lot of positivity. It was the happy... It was that happy feeling. Uh, but as it kind of, like, starts to die down and the others begin... <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot Zahn's name was Rat King, so in the middle of my sentence, I just... My focus immediately went to Rat King. <laughs> Playing Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, your focus, once it's collected, you realize they're safe here. All these dream eaters that are, like, hugging and cheering that they have somewhere safe that only you, someone they trust, knows about, they're happy. And the one dream eater cat starts coming up with like fucking four of them and they all kind of circle, rub against your legs, making a perfect tune as a thank you. It's, it's happy vibes. They're very happy. You have made them happy, which is good. They're friend shape. They are very friend shape, and they enjoy you. Um. So, with that being said, do you stick around with them, or do you go ahead and go back and join the group? She'll probably hang around with the. Guys, make sure they're all all right for a minute, and before heading back to the group. You, <laughs> so because you stay with them, uh, you do get the thing of. You sat down for a second, and now there are seventeen different fucking animals cuddling around you. You have a halberd, kind of resting its head against your side. You have three or four kittens in your lap. There's a bear behind you that just plopped down to give you back support. Like, there's straight up, they're treating you as if you are their king, essentially. <laughs> like, they've adopted you. Like, they full-on adopted you kind of vibe. <laughs> they're friend-shaped. Also, yes, I would like clarification on that, too. A halberd? <laughs> yes, a halberd. Hold on. Halberd. Halberd, okay, I found it. Yes. I had to look through my list. <laughs> like, there's tons of these dream eaters, like, just up landing nearby you curling up and until you realize you have been cat trapped <laughs> you can leave whenever you want to but they're all gonna know <laughs> they're friendship So Gwen patting a couple on them on her on their heads and going, Okay, okay, I'll I'll come check in on you guys later, but I have to go to my other friends before they worry. They all kind of eventually kind of look at each other and like because let me just go ahead and use a tool to show you how surrounded you are. Uh You are- there are a shit ton of them, and you are in the dead center of them. Friends. And more are coming, like... <laughs> all of the Dream Eaters in existence. Uh, but no. Just a- like a good 15 feet away from you, you can see, like, you have become the center of their cuddle pile. Um... As they do kind of realize that you do have to leave and they're very like some of them are upset about it but others are kind of 
just walking up to you and giving you like what can only be described as a good luck charm as they full on give you a small little gem like there there's a gem in one of their little paws and they're offering it to you do you take it little bit of confusion because what why give but she will take it if they're like insistent that she take it like it's that full on thing like yeah you can say no to this but sorry gonna... Nia's raccoon gift there seems very accurate oh yeah no it's directly on point because one of the tanukis is actually giving it to you <laughs> I love that it's, like, it's very the, cute. Puts it in your hand and like backs away as you realize it's not just like a weird stone. It's a pick, like a guitar pick. <laughs> and they all kind of like jumble their words a bit before a meow wow just see. A meow just see, or whatever they're called. Like the meow wow that's straight up Mickey Mouse. That motherfucker. Kind of. Uh, this okay. one. Yes. That one kind of comes up to you and like gives you like a little bow and says, You help us, we help you. Anytime you need us. You are friend. Good friend. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. So as... Ugh, sorry. Burp. Didn't mean to, but I had to, had to be done. It needed to escape. So as you begin to head out and kind of leave... Eventually, you do get to the marketplace, essentially. And as as you come across the marketplace, do you know what you see, Gwynin? Dear Gwynin, Gwynin? What do I see? You see both Cade and your boyfriend just sitting there with way too much money, and you start to wonder how long you were gone. Yeah, those are tracks. It's gambling in reverse. Kate yeah. is quite literally counting the money behind Aaron, who is still like car, st car show style salesman. Come on, just try it. One little piece? Yeah, it's fine. It looks beautiful. Like that kind of fucking thing. When walking up to like <laughs> lean on Aaron, just going, did you kids have fun while I was gone? Yes. Where did you go, by the way? I was getting very worried. Leaning on... Like, full-on leaning on... Aaron went... And she just, like, looks at them in confusion and goes, I texted you. You did. But... Here's the thing about that. Usually talking to a dream eater does not take that long. I would know. Well, I wouldn't. I to be know. fair, I didn't say I was talking to them. I said I was investigating something for them. You know that look of someone who absolutely read a text wrong? And <laughs> just it realizes it in that moment? <laughs> My love! <laughs> <laughs> and then just looks over at Cade with the, help me, look. Help me? Mm. <laughs> no help. Yeah, I'm... Hmm. You put yourself in this one, buddy. <laughs> God damn it. You're the one counting the money, I suppose. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Just completely turned away from whatever is happening at 
their little booth, I suppose, or them being stupid in the middle of the street. Like, straight up not even paying attention anymore. Just, the girlfriend's back. And is back. Love the girlfriend. You know, yeah. priorities, people. Yeah. Couldn't just lean on Aaron. <laughs> Yeah, there Doesn't was, even um, budge. Yeah. There was one of those um little cat three meters. Uh so I forget what the fuck they're actually called. Necho cat. Necho cat. Necho cat. Yeah, it's what is the Necho cat? You are correct. You are correct. <laughs> Necho cats. Um they were looking for a place to stay and they wanted me, I guess, to see if it was safe. Perhaps it is Neko, because that's supposed to be a pun on Echo, isn't it? Yeah. I guess that it also goes with the sound God. motif. Huh. Uh... Puns on top but of puns. <laughs> yeah. But, um, why did you... This seems to be happening quite a bit with everybody, and I don't know why, but it's just... Are you guys alright? I know this is a bad question for us to ask, but are did you go to see? Why? Be more specific, my love. What are you asking about? I think we need like a five-year nap at this point. Can we do that? Is that nice? Can we do that? No, I don't recommend it. <laughs> well, yours is 300. I, don't, I didn't say anything about 300, my love. You don't want one. <laughs> well, I don't want a 300-year one, no. Look, we already had a five-year bullshit. Let's not do it again. Well, that wasn't a nap. Just as bullshit. In any case, are you worried because I went off with a dream eater on my own or for a different reason? Well, one, for the reason of you disappeared after just a single text for like an hour and a half. That's one thing. But, nonetheless, it's one of those things of I trust you very much to hold your own. What if something worse than what you could handle showed up and I didn't know where you went? Uh, I would call for help. I have that ability. Um. Oh, what? Well, yes. I mean, you do have a phone. Yes, I have a phone. I know how to use it. You are quite literally Sometimes. on speed dial. <laughs> That's very sweet. I may have not paid attention to my phone, and I will be honest about that. Kate understands how little I pay attention to my phone when I'm selling things. That is why all of you are on speed dial, and I can just push more buttons if I need you. <laughs> need me or need Cade? Cade, would you be paying attention? Yes. I wouldn't die. No, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't die. Uh, but, yes, three meter. They're fine, by the way. Uh, I have no idea how it got here or what changed in 300 years, but it was um a sort of Amphitheater stage area people used to perform at. What the fuck was that noise? I have no clue. Oh. Oh. That was a glitch noise. A Aaron, did you get briefly EBDB'd? After EBDB'd. <laughs> you good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, well, yes, they're fine. There was evidence of a fight there, but nothing was currently happening, and it seemed safe, so I told them they could stay there, and also that, uh, you know, they could come find me if they needed anything. But uh, something weird definitely happened. You're going to wake up with a cat on you. I'm not going to save you. It's, look, part of the reason I was away so long is because I sat down and a whole bunch of them decided to snuggle and then I couldn't move. Ah, so you're learning. And there's grinning. <laughs> like, gentle head bump, just like, you're terrible. How dare you be mean to me? Your girlfriend. <laughs> Betrayal? Betrayal of the Miet? 5,000 years in jail. <laughs> but, uh, Do you Aaron want to goes... hear about the weird shit, or should we get the others before we talk about the weird shit? Oh, the others actually stopped by for a bit. I told I told them you walked off. I don't know where they went. <laughs> Incredible. I, I genuinely don't think Jet and Julia ha were out by themselves at the at the manga shop basement uh, for a great hour and a half because that's the out time frame I implied. Yeah, I imagine Jules, Jet, you guys probably you know went to join back with the others. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we did. Fair. <laughs> you don't have to sound so worried, Curry. We did. No, no, I'm, I'm just laughing at something. I'm like, Gwen talking to Aaron and Cade, Jet and Jules just off in the corner. They've been at the street vendor the entire time, watching from a distance. <laughs> I don't believe the bodyguards. They, I don't believe they would get away with that without either of those two knowing. Oh yeah, no, I imagine Cade probably gave a fucking comment, didn't he? Good friends. <laughs> Good friends. They were roommates. This is the worst. I hate you guys. <laughs> we love you. No, you don't. I do. <laughs> so they're back now. Uh -huh. You can say no? I don't think so. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they got you there. I'm standing up and my fucking knees buckled. Uh, yeah, Gwen just still leaning on Aaron. Just, then we should gather the others because weird shit happened. And I think it's a, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's definitely something we're probably all going to want to know about, so... I'm sorry, no, Kate's so just now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was muted. <laughs> just... God damn it, Kate. Where's the energy been, man? Oh, okay. I'm good. Are Meet you? Up. Are you? No, but I'm gonna mute. <laughs> Do we beckon the others older over? Do we go to them? What's going on here? I don't fucking know anymore. I guess we'll I... beckon them over. Just I feel like Aaron would be the sort to just look over at the other two where they wherever they are, because I have a feeling they're relatively close. Of course. And and just Are you guys good over there? You're not flirting in public, are you? Well, first and foremost, there's nothing wrong with flirting in public, but yes, it is safe to come over here. Okay, good. I would pick up my girlfriend, but I don't believe I should try that again. <laughs> Unfortunately. I mean, you could. You probably wouldn't be successful, but you could try. I could pick it's you both just... up. <laughs> what? I can pick both of you up. What's the point? Yeah, um, who asked? <laughs> Sorry. 
just was Aaron on the head. I love the canonicity that Aaron is the shortest here. Out of like the entire group? Yeah, aside from Viv. Wait, how tall is Aaron? Six foot one. But say, isn't Jet like 5'10 but wears ridiculous heels? Yes. Jet purposely puts themselves over six foot with heels. Wow. Three inches is not that well it is. But... Don't say like, hey, 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 come down there. <laughs> Three inches isn't that big. Just like two <laughs> minutes is apparently a long time. Okay. Okay. Gotta step oh. in now. No, no, no. One, 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 one thing, one thing, one thing. Okay, go for it, man. You never I've make had, these. So. I've had some pretty long two minutes, I would say. <laughs> Not worth it at all. Okay. Totally worth it. <laughs> Is this in character or have we just derailed? I think yeah. we derailed it. We, we derailed hey. hard. Or... Hold on, give me a second. Okay, giving you a second. You have exactly three seconds. But that's not a second. You did it wrong, Curry. <clears throat> I'm going to commit yeah, genocide but... on houseflies. Yes, you do. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say is what... Is everybody grouped up, or are all what five of us in a little group now? Are we all are we all grouped we're, up? We're, we're all grouped up, I imagine. Also, Echo. Echo, Echo. Echo. He doesn't try to fix it. He just fucking mutes. <laughs> well, he wants to hear us talk. He'll fix it in a minute. That is um, true. Uh, so Gwen will go. So, Jules. Yeah, just like, Jules, 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 Jules. You remember the Dream Eaters, right? Yeah. Well, they found a safe place to hide, and one of them came to find me to... Well, came to find us, but found me. Um, well, I suppose they came to found, find one of us, at least? I don't know. I didn't ask. Um, they, mm -hmm. they wanted uh, me to look at a place for them to see if it was actually safe because there'd been a fight there at some point recently. Huh. So I did. It's fine. It's safe. They're they're chilling. I told them to come find me if they need anything. Um. But uh, something sure definite. That... Oh, wait. Continue. No, you, you. What is your question? <laughs> uh, are we sure the place that just was recently in a fight actually safe? Yes, I am sure. <laughs> Absolutely. The vibes were chill. Okay. Um, but uh, something definitely beefed with the gloom there at some point recently, and I think I spoke with the something, and it. Oh. Nobody can use their words, Juliet, and it is so annoying. Yeah, no, I'm I'm starting to get that. Um, do we have anything we... on this something? We have several things. It is some sort of animatronic, automaton. At, when she mentions that, Juliet j looks like she's about to go say something, stops, and then just like contemplating. You know what? Might as well happen. <laughs> Definitely not the weirdest thing to happen to this group. Um, it knew who I was. Sort of. It took it a minute to figure it out when I mentioned it referred to the place as a prison. But I remember it being a sort of amphitheater stage thing. People would perform music there, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, so I don't know when it became a prison or when the end, the automaton got stuck there, but it knew who I was. It was very angry about me calling the glooms gloom, and it told me to go to Alcatraz. Hmm. 
gave me the password for a lab or something. Wait, weren't we looking for a lab, though? I don't know if it's the same one, but it might be. It's worth taking a look at it, at the very least. Yeah, considering... Well, it told me... It said I look very much like her. I. Um, which I was assuming to mean I look like my biological mother, which, to be fair, I do, yes. I mean, I can't really say anything about it. I'd only ever seen the gloomified version of her- of... that thing. Damn. Well, here's the thing, I suppose. Isn't it technically... Um, what is the word in... I don't remember the word, but it, it's not... her, right? It's... Mm, and Aaron just pauses for a second in that way of a bi or trilingual person who doesn't speak English as a first language and just goes, mm, kind of through himself. <laughs> uh, are you talking about Blight? Is that's what yeah. we're calling her now? Yes, Blight. Okay. Which is, I think, a very rude sentiment, because a lot of people are blithe on this earth, but that's just me. I mean, that is fair, but, you know... <clears throat> At this point, I'm not going to worry about the details. Honestly. But the details are so juicy. Tasty, they are, delicious. but they're also a later problem right now. She's also a bitch, not regardless of aren't. the details. What if they aren't? Why? Why? What? What? what why? Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Aaron, she's trying to kill me. Yes, I know. Trust me, I'm well aware. She asked me to kill you once. <laughs> Out of character was this, this was that been... happy yeah. little? Yeah, I'm assuming this has this never that... been mentioned before. Nope. Just Juliet fucking freezes, holds up a finger, and she, then just l turns to Aaron. And it's just like, I'm sorry. She what? Yes, it was a sort of false paradise situation. She kind of asked me if I wanted to be safe or if I wanted to run, and I was just like, no, fuck you, and just whatever. I She's said a it bitch! nicer than that, but I really should have told her to fuck off. You should have. But, the, but well, I didn't the, know the, you the... back then. I mean, fair, but at the same time, I'm not the only person she's tried to kill. She currently is. Oh, it's, I, I'm not sure what's going on with my brother at this point, other than the fact that you know he's having to hide. Oh yes, this was a long time ago too. This was around the time that I lost my leg. She showed up before you guys did. Well, most uh, of you. Oh, so at the same time she tried to emotionally manipulate me, got it. And wasn't this around the same time that Julius tried to drown Ace in the toilet again? Yeah. Yes. Ugh. And Caden... <laughs> I forgot that was this the fight in the other room. <laughs> God, forgot Julius tried to do that. He also tried to infect Ace with a parasite. He really didn't like Ace. No, he didn't. At this point, it's probably well deserved. He's going to find out what happened with Ace. It's just like, I knew it. Yeah, fair. Okay, continue. Yeah, back on track. Aaron just has this most peaceful look of just, I didn't do the thing, so why, 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 why react drunk? I do think. Yeah, no, Juliet is like visibly processing before she finally lets out a sigh and just waves her hand like she's waving away a fly or something. Just, you know what? You didn't take it. We all know she fucking sucks. 
at this point, it's not the worst thing. Oh, right, doing. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, continue. I have a question for you, Carrie. I have an answer that I definitely didn't repeat about three times because I forgot I muted myself. <laughs> so, I'm going to ignore that for your own sanity. Um, I'm not. You? Nope. Um... I don't remember, which is very rare, but I don't remember if I, as Aaron, gave the fragment, the little shard, to Zack, or I kept it. I feel like you gave it to Zack in the tower. I hope Actually, you I gave it to someone. I gave it to someone on the ship. I don't know if it was Z or Zack. Which ooh, it would have been Z if tower. it was on the ship then, because we only ever interacted with Zack on the tower. Yeah. No, he was on the ship briefly. Well, he gave briefly. a talk to Aaron. Oh, right, yeah, was it? Didn't he end up on the ship with us when, you know, Viv sort of burnt down the entire fucking tower? Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. For the section that lasted all of, like, ten minutes, yes. I actually have this answer. We have that notated in out of character as it was given to Zach. Okay. Okay. Never mind, then. Okay. I honestly was just going to take out the fucking fragment and say, here, catch, kind of energy. <laughs> yeah, no, Juliet at this point. It's just, just, no, no. Just. I know. Like, she is clearly exasperated, but at this point, she is also accepting the fact, you know what, that was five fucking years ago. He didn't take the deal? We're good. A good perception on time. But you had five well, minutes to the back. It's... You didn't. Yeah, Aaron is a very straightforward kind of person. I mean, if we want to, we can have it where Juliet just straight up says, you know what? That was five years ago. You didn't take the deal. It doesn't fucking matter at this point. She does that shit. Aaron's going to buffer for a little bit, thinking. What? What is it? Just that slow look towards... Uh, and Juliet... Of all people, and probably Cade, would know the look of, I can't, I can't bring that up here, we're in the middle of the fucking street, kind of look. <laughs> Aaron. Do we need to go somewhere first, or? No, this is a conversation that I've technically brought up twice before, and my fucking ideas have been... Uh, not rejected, just not liked. So I'm not going to bring it up. Please, you're part of the group too, Aaron. What's the idea? Who knows? Well, Third time's the charm. thinking chart. about Ezekiel and Morgana. Very polite. What about them? You know that slanty face emoji that is basically pure disappointment or like <laughs> adjacent annoyance? Yeah, that one. It's the fucking slowly mm, squinting kind of look. <laughs> I just. They were people first, right? They were people before I they don't... were ever. To no, be... Blight was ever a person, but Blight... continue. I highly doubt Blight was actually a person. Like, out, uh, out of character real quick. Has it been mentioned before to Juliet how Blight was created? Or... Cause I remember we that... have put together that Blight was made in a lab. Yeah. 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 yeah so Juliet just like, Blight was straight up made in a lab. Just this slow look over at both Juliet and Gwen, and then looking directly at Cade. Ooh, Cade, of all people! 
would know that most of Eren's, like, accoutrements are from a lab. And just going, eh. No, I mean, like... <sighs> Whatever Blight is was literally made in a test tube. It only looks like Morgana because it touched her corpse. Yeah. Also Blight... thinks like Morgana and has her memories, and I don't like that. But continue. I mean, she pretty much said it. Blight was not a person first. It just touched the person and said, hmm, I like this. <laughs> okay. Just as simple I... as that. Okay. Go ahead, Cade. No, I... Mm... I know I feel iffy about that. Kate Mostly because is... I'm not, I, you know, I literally was not a person for a while. That's, That's a different Aaron situation. Is... You're right, but it's, it's the same concept. Out of character, this is actually kind of frustrating me because I can't figure out the words for it. Me too. Uh... <laughs> Because Julia is not trying to say that the lab is what makes them not human. And I don't know if Aaron is Kate are joking about that or not. But it doesn't I think the feel word... like I don't it doesn't feel like it's joking. Curry, please do not. I am done I was just now. gonna say Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think the word you're looking for is she's an anomaly. She's not a person, she's an anomaly. She and was created, but she was not created in the way that That's others the were. That's problem, She's just though, because it still applies to these two! Volume. Sorry. She's an, but they, she's okay. an, they have mentioned and considered themselves as anomalies. Because So Julia can't phrase it like that. She can't say that Morgana was never a person to begin with, because Cade will get offended. It's not offended. It's not like... I'm hurt. It's that I'm conf it's confusing feelings. The fun part is that this is an interesting. Thing in character and out of character. It's a how will you see this because this is a conflict point. Will you stand by the hey, this is they are anomalous? Will you put the nobodies in their own category? Will you put the glooms in their own category? Will you put lab created things in their own category? How will your heroes stand in this situation? That's what I'm getting frustrated with, because I can't find the words that correctly convey the position Juliet has in this situation. Because she mm -hmm. considers Morgana Blight completely separate from everything else, from the lab creations, from the nobodies, from the heartless, from the gloom, that sort of stuff. She considers... <sighs> It's okay. okay. She sees Blight as not human, never having been having be started as human, and not because of the lab. But the lab did not help. Okay. Then we start there. We start as Blight itself. The being known as Blight being separate from all else. And you start with that narrative. All that right. is where you start explaining things. In which okay? case, that's where Juliet fucking starts. She's just like, I'm not saying Blight was never human because she was started in a lab or anything like that. She's, she's something else entirely. I'm not even sure if she's fucking Gloom at this point. Though she might be fucking Gloom, who knows. Took myself out for a second. <laughs> but <laughs> but the point of the matter is, is that she wasn't human. She never started off as human. She is just some 
faint representation of what a human looks and acts like. And this is all in character, by the way. This is Juliet yeah. saying this. You are right. They were not, but we don't know right now. And obviously they haven't done good things. And there's obviously... Um, there is, again, the copious why... amounts of mur murder, kidnapping, uh, deal-making. Right. And there's obviously also the quote-unquote relationship between that and Gwen. Yeah. But there's a lot of... It's also like, a this is another unique situation from other stuff that's happened in the past. To be... You guys are asking why we don't like Blight and Ezekiel, right? It's obvious why you don't. It's, this is a completely different thing for me. Of how you see them as in their existence. But I understand why you do. Yeah, yeah no. Blight, I don't consider... I, I consider her separate. Whatever Blight can be called, she is separate. Ezekiel, I just have personal beef with. Because, you know, I would have graduated <laughs> from the academy at this time if it wasn't for him. I'm sorry, just the fucking... Morgana is something with me, and then it just turns to Ezekiel. This motherfucker, we got beef. <laughs> Ezekiel, I, I hate as a person. Okay. Like, that, that, it doesn't sound like a dismissive okay or something to end the, end the conversation. It's just a, okay. I've already Straightforward mentioned, person. Uh, I've already um, mentioned all the shit that he's done before. I don't need to rehash it when it's just the five of us in an alley. That actually... Should we move someplace that's not the alley? He probably should. Do you want to go back to uh, the noodle shop with uh, Rito, or do you want to go to my brother and sister's house? You know what? Let's go to your brother's and sister's house because I don't think I could handle Rito get uh, drinking the tea as they are. Okay. Okay, do you have the money? Yes, of course. Okay, well, let, let's get going. I need to text Kay, y'all know. Just takes out the phone and just... You know when someone starts a conversation with, hey, we're coming over, and immediately gets, like, a fucking paragraph of, like, where have you been? <laughs> Fuck it. The look on their face, visibly, of like, uh... Juliet, as soon as, as soon as she sees the look, just sort of leaning over to look at the phone. Just... Huh. How long has it, is it been? True... <laughs> it is true and well, the energy of Hayes the Worrywart, even though he acts aloof. No, Juliet just looks at Aaron just like so wait, how long has it been? About an hour and a half on just doing this and the saddling and whatnot. Huh. And we were gone for a little while before. I don't time is wibbly wobbly when it comes to uh being underground, but I don't know. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Did Gwen finish her recap? She did. Or did I? Okay, cause I got a. I, I just I'm got a sure, random I'm headache. Sure she did. Gwen. Yeah. Did you finish? Did you your finish recap? your recap? I don't know anymore. I don't know when I stopped talking, so I I can't help you. 
I remember one of the last things you mentioned was Alcatraz and the lab and how it's our best bet because we don't know if it's the right lab, but we've been looking for a lab, but so we might as well look. Does that help any? I mean, I remember saying something like that, but I don't know when I stopped talking. You don't remember what you said afterwards? Nope. Brain soup? It, it's not Cherry's fault, but Cherry yelling and getting frustrated made my brain a little soupy, yes. Sorry. It's okay. I understand the frustration, it just it turned my brain into soup. Well, I guess we can safely assume that everything has been recapped then, I guess, because we uh, because the arena was mentioned, the Dream Eaters were mentioned, the damage in the arena was mentioned, the fast, uh, Freddy Fazbear motherfucker was mentioned, as well as his reactions and the password. Yes, that's going to stick around now, because uh, fuck you. Gwen <laughs> didn't say the password, but... She, she, did, she I did mention think... that she got the password. She got a password, but she didn't say yeah. it out loud. I think I got as far as mentioning it seemed aggressive about Gwen calling them glooms, and that's when we got derailed, but uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. That, yeah. that is yeah. when we got derailed. Okay, so we'll. So he got aggressive about glooms, we got a little derailed. Because we started talking about blight. Oh. Yeah. Then Aaron mm -hmm. asked about our issues with Blight after revealing yeah. that Blight had... God damn. Okay, anyways. As Gwen, do you want to finish? As we're walking to the apartment, I suppose. Yeah, Gwen, do you want to finish the recap on the way back to the apartment? Uh, what else needs to be mentioned? Uh... Whatever you feel is appropriate to be mentioned. Because you did mention the Angry Gloom Man. The anger man with the gloom stick up his ass. No, I can't phrase this. I can't make this a funny phrase. God damn it. Um, the guy who was pissed about glooms, yeah. Yeah, the, autonom the automaton that seemed annoyed when Gwen called them glooms, but I can't think of anything else to add to that. I think okay. after he told Gwen that... I'm gonna fucking... Uh... Right. After he told Gwen about the password and the lab on Alcatraz and where she could meet him there, I think that's the point where he fucked off into a corridor of, corridor of darkness and then Gwen got to have her moment. Yeah, then Gwen got to have her moment and got to be a center of a giant cuddle pile. And now she has a pick that will literally go, hey, Dream Eaters! Fuck that guy up individually. <laughs> Fuck that guy in particular. Yes. Um. So, you guys are making your way back to... Yeah, I, I, I get you, Aaron. I, I got one a little earlier, too. Um. Should we consider about uh, closing out the well, we'll just we'll, Yeah, we'll just say you guys make it back to the... You guys make it back to the uh, apartment, and you guys kind of begin to unwind. What do you... Just unwinding time. What do you guys do to unwind? It's like... Hmm. I'm counting your the, hair. I'm getting the mental image of Juliet just draping herself on something. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I saw that coming, and I had that thought, too. Don't worry. She just fucking sprawls across Jet's lap as soon as he sits down. Cat behavior. Cat behavior. Um, Gwen, Aaron, Jet, Cade, what are y'all doing? You don't have to speak if you don't want to speak, by the way, Aaron. Because I know you... Jet is most likely having a blue screen moment. He uh, just suspect <laughs> of cat law. Yeah. Probably okay. is uh, divvying up the money they got. I was going to make that joke, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Kate's in the corner just counting his money. He's like, which by the way, uh, roll me a d20, both of you, please. 
Why? I Just feel like it's a lot more than 20. All right, here you go. I got 14. Okay. How many high quality? How many high quality materials did you make? Oh my god. It's fine. How many high quality materials did you make, Aaron? I only rolled for about three, and all of them were high quality. Okay, so. Like, uh, I I can show you or tell you uh, how I was rolling them. I'm gonna go ahead and say because of you guys, so 14, 15, 15 times two, thirty, three hundred dollars or three fifty total. You guys can split it evenly, or one even take the mass. Well, what does that equate in money, my good dude? Uh, one to one ratio. But that's not how the money is calculated. Money follows yen convert conversions. How much is yen worth in USD? Yen is it left? A, yen is, a one yen is early is close to one cent. I'm pretty sure it's like less than a cent, to be honest. Less than yeah, a cent, but I, I tend to remember the approximate co uh, the approximate conversion of yen because a h 100 yen stores exist. They're basically dollar stores. One Japanese yen equals point oh oh sixty seven USD. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we'll do that math later. Because I don't. I've I already got a. I would, of a mind suggest, I would just suggest adding on a zero at the end of that. 3,500 okay. instead of 350. Okay. We'll Does that do sound that. good to you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with it. Alright, there we go. Hold on. Hold on. I actually have to play for paint though right now. I just gotta fucking eye paint. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, I th Hi, welcome to hell. Yeah, let's just. It, as... no, look, I, can, I, I have I have Tylenol for a reason. Curry no, when the mi migraine. Yeah, <laughs> when the pain is reaching your eyes, the best you can do is lie down, close them, and put something over them. Preferably something cold. Go ahead and cold. end the recording. Yeah, I'm ending okay. the recording.